Hey everyone, this is going to be a very different kind of video from the last one that I made. Long story short, I love Call of Duty Zombies. I've been a big fan of it ever since the first Black Ops in 2010, and the peak of the game mode had to be in Black Ops 3 which came out exactly 5 years ago now. I took a bit of a hiatus from it though during the last few years because it had just declined in quality a little bit in my opinion, uh, but with the new Black Ops Cold War Zombies that just came out, I've never had this much fun playing zombies in years. Uh, the mechanics are great, I love the innovation, and the design of the new map really appeal to me. A big part of why I've always loved zombies are the main easter egg quests, and I recently streamed that over on Twitch a few days ago for the new map die machine, so if you want to check out the full run, the VODs are up there. I wanted to make a guide for how to complete this easter egg since I've been having so much fun lately just streaming and uploading content for games that I love playing. So this video is going to be a guide on how to complete the main easter egg for Die Machine. I'll be making this as short and to the point as I possibly can since I know I love those kind of zombies guys and I'm sure that you do as well. I hope this helps anyone out there watching this. Uh, anyways, let's get started. The first step of this easter egg is going to be to turn on power and craft the Pack-a-Punch machine. This is a very easy step. All you need to do is simply follow your objective marker to the particle accelerator down in the bunker where you can turn on the power after interacting with some switches that will be marked for you. This will then spawn an anomaly that will take you to the dark ether. Interact with it, go to the dark ether, and then make your way over to one of the two ether tunnels either by the crash site or the pond that will once again be marked for you. You will need 500 points to use these tunnels, and uh, once you do, you will be transported back down into the bunker area where you can pick up a transparent ghost-like pack-a-punch part. Once you do this, simply head back to where the anomaly was in the dark ether, and there you'll find a pack-a-punch machine waiting to be crafted. Interact with it using the part you just picked up, and you'll be teleported back to the real world. You now have pack-a-punch and power turned on. Your next step is going to be to craft the ether scope. To do this, simply enter any of the anomalies around the map to enter the dark ether. In the dark ether, you're going to be looking for three parts to craft the scope. Keep in mind that the order in which you pick up these parts is going to be randomized each and every time you play. One of the parts can be found in the spawn area near the stairs, the next part can be found on top of this jet engine in the crash site, and the last and final part can be found in the particle accelerator next to this portal. Once you have all three parts, head over to the crafting station below Pack-a-Punch to build the ether scope. The next step is to spawn in two specific anomalies that you'll be needing later on in the easter egg. To start this, you'll need to head over to this orb that will spawn in the medical bay. Interact with it, go into the dark ether, and then enter the small room on the side that will have a desk with a computer and diary on it. You need to pick up the diary and then proceed to find three blue orbs around the map. The first one can be found directly under the computer room and behind Speed Cola. Interact with it to spawn the ghost of a man. Then interact with the ghost to get him to start reading. You can then head over to the next blue orb, which can be found in the trial room. Again, interact with the orb and then the man who spawns in to get him to start reading. And then, last but not least, the third orb can be found directly in front of the crafting station where you built the ether scope. Interact with it, spawn the man, and then interact with the man. Once you are teleported out of the dark ether, return to the room with the computer and interact with the computer. This will input the password that the ghost gave to you while he was reading. Now we'll need to provide power to the hanging machine in the center of the medical bay. This is going to require all four elemental wonder weapon upgrades. Obviously we're going to need to get the wonder weapon in the first place to do any of that, so to get a free wonder weapon or die shockwave as it's called by the game, you need to wait until a green megaton zombie spawns into the map. He can show up anywhere between rounds 9 through 12. Once he shows up, don't kill him just yet. Lure him over to this tree and get him to blast it. If you do this correctly, you'll hear some dialogue talking about the liquid spilling from the tree. This will be important later on for the cryo upgrade. Once the Megaton has done this, he's pretty much outlived his purpose. You can kill him, after which you'll split into two twin Megatons. Simply kill them as well and then go and pick up the keycard that they drop. You then need to enter this keycard into the drawer in the weapons room. The drawer will open up, revealing a remote. You need to pick up that remote and then head all the way back back to the living room area of the knocked bunker in spawn. You'll find a small shed with a machine inside of it containing the die shockwave. You need to lure a huge horde of zombies in front of the shed and then turn on the machine by interacting with it from the side. This will start a vacuum that begins killing all zombies in front of the shed. If you've killed enough zombies, the machine will stop and you can interact with it again. This will blast down the door to the shed, allowing you to pick up the die shockwave inside. You now have the wonder weapon. Next you can start with the Wonder Weapon upgrades. Cryo is a good element to start with since you've pretty much already taken care of the first step with the Megaton blasting the tree. With your newly acquired Die Shockwave, you need to blast this crate hanging off the side of the Noct Bunker. If you go to where it fell in the pond area, you'll find a flask. 
pick up the flask and take it to the tree that the Megaton shot earlier. You can now interact with the tree to place the flask there to collect all the liquid. This will take a couple of seconds to complete, but once the flask is done collecting, it should turn blue. Pick it up and head to the medical bay. Interact with this small crate here and you will have acquired the cryo emitter upgrade. You now need to ice blast the left capacitor facing the entrance to the particle accelerator room on this hanging machine. Do this and the capacitor will rise up. One down, three to go. Next, you can work on acquiring the Nova 5 upgrade. To start this, you need to head back to the knocked bunker and go to the mezzanine area of the second floor. There you'll see a canister that you can pull towards you by using the secondary fire of the Wonder Weapon. If you're unable to do this, make sure that your Wonder Weapon isn't at full ammo. Using the vacuum ability of the Wonder Weapon requires it to not be at full ammo, so keep that in mind. Once you've acquired the canister, go to the underground area of the weapons lab and interact with a tank in the corner of the room. You'll now need to wait for a Plague Hound to spawn in and then kill it near this tank to fill it up. Once that's done, remove the canister from the tank and then head to the crash site area of the map. There you'll find a small crate that you can place the canister on. Once you've done that, melee the canister and then interact with the crate again. You now have the Nova 5 upgrade. Using the Nova shots of your newly upgraded Wonder Weapon, head back to the medical bay and shoot the capacitor on the right side of the hanging machine facing the entrance to the control room. The capacitor will rise up. Two down, two to go. Next, you can work on acquiring the fire upgrade for the Wonder Weapon. To start this, head over to the anomaly in the pond area by the tree and use it to enter the dark ether. Once there, run all the way over to the ether tunnel in the crash site. There you'll find a small box that you can melee. Once you've done that, the box will open up to reveal a fuse. Pick up the fuse and head all the way over to the underground portion of the weapons lab. Interact with the crate directly across from Deadshot. Once you've done that, go to the pond area and hop on top of the truck. You'll find a crate there that you can interact with to acquire the fire or thermophasic upgrade. With this upgrade, you need to go back to the medical bay and then shoot the capacitor to the left of the one that you shot earlier with Nova 5. Now you just have one capacitor left to deal with. For the final Wonder Weapon upgrade, you're going to be working on lightning. Head over to the anomaly that is spawned beneath the Pack-a-Bunch machine and use that to enter the Dark Aether. There you'll be looking for three crystals across the map that you need to absorb with the secondary fire of your Wonder Weapon. Keep in mind that each and every time you absorb a crystal, Crystal, you need to head to the area beneath Pack-a-Punch and shoot this crate in the corner of the room with the energy of that crystal. You cannot simply absorb all three crystals first and then deposit their energy at the same time. The first crystal can be found on some rocks in the pond area, the second crystal is next to the Wonderfizz machine in the penthouse of the Knocked Bunker, and the third crystal is on some rocks near Juggernog in the crash site leading down into the bunker. Once you've fully charged up the crate with the energy of the three crystals, simply interact with it to acquire the Lightning or Electro Bolt Wonder Weapon upgrade. You now need to shoot the last remaining capacitor on the hanging machine in the medical bay to finish providing power to the machine. Now that the power has been provided to the machine, an anomaly will spawn in the room connecting the medical bay and the particle accelerator. Interact with that anomaly and enter the dark ether. Once there, go back up the stairs in the medical bay and interact with the blue orb outside of the small computer room. This will trigger a dialogue sequence sequence between two ghosts. Once you are finished talking, you will be teleported back into the real world where you can pick up a newly spawned ether wrench on the floor. With the ether wrench, head back to the spawn area and go up to the tank. Interact with it three times and kill the zombie that spawns out of the top. Then toss one of your lethals at the tank. If done correctly, the tank will fire at the crash site portion of the map. You then need to head over to the crash site and pick up the decontamination agent. You need to carry the agent all the way back to the medical bay and place it in the red socket just outside of the computer room. Now, the machine will demand two test subjects. For this, you need to wait for the Megaton to spawn. Once it does, kill it and split it into two twin Megatons and then lure those two twins to the hanging machine in the medical bay. If you get them to stand in the blue circle directly beneath the machine, the machine will absorb them one by one and trap them inside. Once this has happened, interact with the computer in the small room on the side. The Megatons will converge to form a character named Dr. Orlov who will then escape into the Particle Accelerator room. At this point, you must prepare for the final step of the easter egg, the boss fight. Make sure you stock up on all your perks and upgrade your armor and primary weapon as much as possible. I'd also strongly recommend carrying the Electro Bolt variant of the Wonder Weapon with you into the boss fight. And once you're done preparing, interact with the anomaly in the living room of the Knocked Bunker. Once you've entered the Dark Aether, go to the corner of the Omega Outpost of the Knocked Bunker to interact with the blue orb that will spawn a memory of Dr. Orlov. Once he's done speaking, you'll be teleported back to the real world where you can pick up his family photo. 
Once you've picked that up, you'll be teleported to the particle accelerator room near Pack-a-Punch, where you'll find the real Orlov who is now a zombie. After a bit of dialogue, he will begin the process of shutting the facility down. During this time, an infinite wave of zombies, megatons, and plague hounds will begin to spawn into the map. Your job is to survive for as long as possible while Orlov deactivates three machines across the room. The game will tell you to protect Orlov, but in my experience, he never takes damage from the zombies. The zombies will simply slow down his process of shutting down each machine, so make sure you prioritize your survival first, and then deal with the zombies hounding Orlov later. The Die Electro Bolt is invaluable in this fight, as it makes quick work of the zombies and doesn't require you to worry too much about running low on ammo since lots of megatons will keep on spawning in who drop ammo upon being killed. Once Orlov has shut down all of the machines, it's time for you to escape. You'll have a little over a minute to make it out of the facility and get all the way to the pond area to successfully exfiltrate by chopper. The really difficult part of this step is avoiding several fountains of electricity that have spawned all across the map to block your exit on top of the plethora of zombies that are already spawning in. These barriers damage you if you collide with them, and there is no way to walk through them. So be extremely careful when escaping, and make sure you have a solid escape route in mind beforehand. The one that worked for me was going to the weapons lab, the crash site, and finally the pond. Two things to keep in mind in this route is that you will need to vault over the railing of the stairs in the weapons lab to make it out of the room, and then survive for a few seconds in the pond since the chopper may not land as soon as you want it to. But as soon as it lands, interact with it to get on board and escape the map which will then be blown to bits. And there it is. Congratulations, you've successfully beaten the Die Machine Easter Egg. Alright everyone, that's going to be the end of this guide. I really hope this helped you, and again, I know it's a very different kind of video from the last one that I made on Death Stranding, and I'm definitely going to be making those kind of analytical videos again in the future. But every now and then, it just makes me happy to do something simple like this. If you want to connect with me further, feel free to join my Discord and hang out with me on Twitch where I stream quite often. The links to both of those are in the description. So thank you again so much for watching, and as always, keep on keeping on.